Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Crimson Trace LPVO line. Right here, this one, and the difference is these are now in a 34 millimeter tube diameter. I am just not fast with LPVOs. I need to put so much more training time in with them. If you don't know what an LPVO is, this is one of them. And it's like a hunting scope, but a little bit different because it's in the lower power range. So hence LPVO, low power variable optic, meaning it's gonna be somewhere between like maybe one to four, one to six, one to eight, or even up to one to 10. So it's gonna be that intermediate kind of magnification. Zero for when you're up close and a little bit of extra range say three, five, 600 yards on that max power. Real quick, before we get into everything that the Hardline LPVO from Crimson Trace is about, I wanna give a huge shout out to my Patreons. Nothing on the channel would be possible without you guys right now. And to the sponsor of today's video, which is True Shot. They supply all of the ammo for the channel. Awesome guys out in Tempe, Arizona, good friends of mine. Check them out if you need some new ammo supply. Now let's talk about what the differences are in the new Hardline version of the LPVOs from Crimson Trace. There's gonna be a couple of additional things you're gonna get with it, but the biggest change here is going to be it's gonna have a 34 millimeter tube diameter, which is gonna make a little bit of a difference out there on the range. Now that tube diameter is not only gonna help with how much light can pass through there, but it's also gonna help with a little bit of a wider field of view. Now this is a generality, but the larger the tube, generally if the glass is done right, you're gonna be able to use it in more lower light conditions, just a little bit better. And you're also gonna have a little bit more of a view since there is a wider piece of glass in there when you're actually using it out on the range. Now these versions are second focal plane. So if you don't know the difference between first focal plane and second focal plane, first focal plane is what I like to call fancy. That reticle changes size as you add magnification or take it away. Where second focal plane stays the same size no matter what the magnification level is. Now why that is important is because on most second focal plane spokes there is a determined point in that magnification where your subtensions in that reticle are true and that's generally going to be max power. So you need to keep an eye on that. As far as the construction here, it's gonna be made of that standard aerospace grade aluminum which most optic tubes are made out of these days. It's been tested to that military standard 810G which means it can take some drops, it can take some bumps and bruises out there and that definitely happened while I was using this. It's rated IPX7 for that waterproofing so basically one meter underwater, 30 minutes, and you've probably got bigger things to worry about if you and your weapon are a meter underwater for 30 minutes. The reticle, of course, is etched. It is illuminated in red and has 12 brightness settings. There is an off setting in between each illumination number, which is good because then you can just turn it off and be at max, minimum, or mid magnification, should you desire if you know what kind of light you're going into. Now, the battery life on LPVOs is heavily dependent on the brightness setting. They are not going to give you that daylight bright red dot 50,000 hour battery life. It's just not possible in the way these are right now and the technology that's available. These are set up for a standard 100 yard zero. The turrets are resettable to zero. You will have 10 mil of adjustment. The reticle design here is the new TR1 mil, which can be used for ranging and reticle holds. Pretty much everything can be done in body. You don't have to dial or set a click value or anything like that, as long as you know the reticle. In the box, you will get the standard stuff that comes with most optics these days, which is a microfiber cloth, your manuals, an explanation of how the reticle works, your optic. You're gonna get some flip-up cap covers now, which is new, and you're also gonna get an included throw levers, which is definitely a very nice touch for an LPVO. When it comes to the size and use, the eye box is gonna be about three and a half inches, which is not terrible, coming in at about 18 ounces with a length right at about 11.6 inches. Now out on the range, I have to say this thing is actually pretty clear. So whatever glass they're using is definitely nice. It is fully multi-coated, so it's gonna give you a good solid color and a good solid view through that glass without a lot of chromatic aberration. Now most of the range days I use this here locally were full sun days, but I did get an opportunity to run this up at Gunsight Academy, uh, which was very overcast, it actually snowed on us at one point. 
but they say the scope has 90% light pass through and that was a big help out there on the range because we were shooting at targets everything from 100 to I believe 350 yards at distance while running and doing an LPVO course. The eye box out at max magnification is definitely pretty tight. Um, and anytime you go up past about six or eight, and especially when you get into 10, your eye box gets more tight and your field of view gets lower. That's just how magnified optics work. Once you set the diopter to your eye, however, the reticle is very clear and you're not gonna have a problem at all hitting targets out to 300 meters or yards extremely quickly. Overall, out on the range, the performance of the Crimson Trace Hardline and the new 34 millimeter tube, it was pretty good. It's about what I would expect. I've run a few of the Crimson Trace optics before and for the price point, they seem to do very well. Being able to use it at speed out on a course in low light at the Gunsight Academy definitely gave me kind of a little bit of a different view of it this time than the standard stuff I would do here locally because generally I'm fairly static and I don't get to go out quite as far with the LPVOs, especially while moving and running through a course of fire for time, basically, you know, competing against other people. When it comes to the LPVO game and running them out there on the range, I am not a competitor and I'm definitely no expert with it. And when I was out at Gunsight, I pretty much got my butt kicked and my clock cleaned by everybody that was a competitive shooter in their off time or professionally because they really were very fast with the LPVOs out there. And I am just not. What I will say is it's a pretty decent setup here. That 34 millimeter tube definitely does open up the view a little bit, whether you're at a medium distance, especially at a far distance. If you can get a couple more feet of view, that's definitely worth taking a look at as compared to a smaller tube diameter where it might not pass as much light and it might not give you as much field of view. As far as the ruggedness of this thing goes, I saw these things get dropped. I saw them thrown in the bed of the pickup truck and driven around for three days out in the terrain out there, smashing into the sides of the pickup truck, getting thrown on the ground. All kinds of stuff was going on out there with everybody that was attending that event. So I feel pretty comfortable that it's going to survive some bumps and some bruises out on the range. I know this one personally was in the bed of a pickup truck, got tossed around. It was knocked out of the pickup bed when it was sitting there with all the other ones. It fell over more than once out there on the stands that weren't quite working so well and kept breaking and it kept falling on the ground. So as far as the shock rating or whatever testing they did, it seems to hold true. It didn't lose zero. The uh, lighting system in there kept working. So my illumination was fine under the buttons broke. Uh, none, of the, none of the turrets came undone, anything like that. So overall, I think well done. When it comes to the cost of the new Hardline LPVO, they've got a couple different versions. They've got MOA, they've got MIL, they've got one to six, one to eight, and one to 10. Like I said, you get your flip up caps and that really nice throw lever. So most LPVOs don't come with throw levers and you end up spending like 40, 50, sometimes over a hundred bucks, depending on what kind of throw lever you want. So it's nice that that is included because as you're out there on the range, you might want to go full mag or more or less and you've got to really spin that thing over quick and sometimes it can suck to try and just grab the end of the tube right there. Not bad. So you can find them out there right about 450. That is the MSRP. What I will say is generally if you wait a little bit, the street price is far less than that. You, I'm, I'm assuming you'll probably see them out there for like 399 or something like that, which I think for the overall package that you get with it and how it performed out there, Everybody that used it said it was a pretty decent one compared to other ones that they have used, especially in that price point. So you're really thinking about some of the lower price Vortex stuff, you know, those Strike Eagles, things right around that price range. It really fits right in there with the options it's giving you, what it comes with and how it performs out there. And Crimson Trace does have that lifetime warranty on these hardline LPVOs. So should you beat this thing up too bad or completely destroy it, you're going to send that thing in and you will get yourself a new optic. I think that's really the commonality between most of the LPVOs now. They seem to all have that lifetime warranty as long as they're within a certain price range. Now make sure you hit that sub button, give the video a like, and let me know what your thoughts are on the new 34 millimeter tube or just LPVOs in general. It seems that some people love them, some people hate them, and some people just don't really care and they just gonna stick with a red dot. Let me know in the comments down below. Get out on the range, have some fun. Huge thanks to my Patreons again and True Shot for sponsoring the video and all of the ammo here today. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. I will see you all on the next one.